Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about My 600 Pound Life, Season 12, Episode 5, Rose's Story. We're going to get into Rose's story. Before we get into that, make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, comment on the episode. Let's go, Blair. So Rose is 58. Weight is unknown. Mm -hmm. Uh, We see her. She's sleeping in a room with her stepson, her daughter-in-law, her Mm -hmm. grandson, pretty much because people don't want her to sleep alone in case she falls. Mm Mm-hmm. She's able to stand on her own and walk, but it's painful. She describes it as somebody having a machete and twisting it in your back. I mean, that's usually what it is when you're that big. Yeah, all that back pain. So she lives with her family and her husband. She showers twice a week. Mm. Um, Sam, her daughter-in-law, helps her um, while she's in the shower because she can't get to her back. Mm -hmm. So we actually see the shower scene and Sam is helping her out. Mm -hmm. So after her shower, she gets back in bed while Sam makes her breakfast. And it is a large breakfast, as a lot of the people have on these shows. It's like, it looks like a whole bunch of eggs, multiple um toast but it's like the thick kind of texas toast looking mm. with the butter and she's got sausage patties and it looked like she had ham too so she had like two plates worth of food yeah i want to mm. call fraud on my 600 pound life brex- breakfasts mm. i don't think these people eat these things for breakfast mm. what who am i to believe that for breakfast when you basically eat anything you want mm-hmm. you're this big and things of that nature I think they do this for the camera. I think they'd be like, you know what, for breakfast, I I want eggs and I want sausage and I want toast and I want all these things. Who who to say you're not eating pork chops for breakfast or things of that nature? Or pizza or cake. Or, or just food in general. Like uh-huh. I just feel like, hey, you know, for breakfast, this is what I eat for breakfast. And the porches they got the portrait size wrong. Mm-hmm. But they feel like, you know, it's just breakfast, it's just hard to cook. Even all them eggs and all them sausage patties, this is nasty after a while. Mm-hmm. So I'm I just find it very hard to believe that everybody got the same breakfast regimen. Okay. But it's just different portions. It's like, oh yeah, I just eat eggs and then I eat like, you know, bacon and then I eat all this bit this one episode, I think it was two episodes ago. She had like biscuits, like mm-hmm. like twelve biscuits, and I'm just like, what is this? And then go to lunch where it's like McDonald's. So I'm like, I I'm I'm calling fraud on breakfast. It still was bad, but you know it is what it is. Well, we learn a little bit about her history, and we uh, learned that her mom married her stepdad when she was four. She was close to her stepdad, and they would sing in church together. Her mom then passed away, and after her mom passed away, her stepdad started doing crimes, and he went to prison. Mm. So after her mom passed, she was really depressed, and she started eating a lot, Mm -hmm. hoping that she would wither away, and the Lord would take her home to be with her mom, which did not happen. I mean, of course not. Right. So when she was 13, she weighed 250 pounds. Mm -hmm. She ended up joining ROTC in high school. And because of that, they do a lot of marching and she lost a lot of weight um, due to being in that program. Mm. Her current husband was actually in ROTC with her, but she ended up marrying another man when she graduated, this guy named Jesse. Mm. So they were married for seven years and they divorced. She did have a child by Jesse, but she wasn't really affected by that divorce because she knew she shouldn't have married him in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then she started working at a daycare center um, and she met a man named Ray at an auto shop. Mm -hmm. She knew him for three months until um, at that point they got married and they were together for 15 years and they broke up. When he decided he wanted to start sleeping with her best friend, which now Ray and her best friend are married. Congratulations. Yes. So after that divorce, she ate a lot and she was really depressed. She went on disability and they ended up getting her a social worker and the social worker helped her to get up and walking and got her to want to go to her ROTC reunion. Mm -hmm. So at the reunion is where she saw her current husband, Russell. Three months later, they became a couple. Mm -hmm. Five years later, he proposed. And Russell has to keep reassuring her because she's very insecure about her weight. He does truck driving for a living. Mm -hmm. So she's always worried that he might be with somebody else. So how do you feel about the story that we learned on Rose? 
Well, it makes sense. I'm, I'm saying like it adds up as far as a lot of the people with this like food addiction or even people with any addiction, but specifically the food addiction, mm-hmm. they've got some traumatic stuff that happened at a very young age. Um, so to hear that she lost her mom, her stepdad wasn't in, any longer like there to support her. Mm-hmm. Like she really was left to her own devices and the device that she had within hand's reach was food. Mm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I I had trouble really thinking or trying to contemplate if she have a mental illness, mm. um, because usually, like I know, food addiction is is a real thing, of course, but usually, like I'm like, okay, everybody parent dies, right? And the the wormhole that she found herself falling into. I wonder what really was the trigger of it. I understand that, you know, she really took it hard, hard to the point where she's like, she wanted to die with her mother Mm -hmm. to where she said she couldn't see life without her mother, which most of us can't. But um, I don't know what it is. It's just this heartbreaking, heartbreaking, heartbreak that got her in this um, position Mm -hmm. that she was in. And I wonder if it was a mental illness in the way that we see other people's story. Because this story, as we go see down the line, this story actually was pretty straight to the point and bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. So I wonder if it was just, I don't want to say laziness because I don't want to sound insensitive, but once she was told what she has to do, she did it just like that. Yeah. So it kind of leads me to think like, what, what was stopping you before and things of that nature well she spoke to her having depression yeah and i mean depression is a real hurdle to get over Mm -hmm. and it stops you with having motivation you lose all hope you pretty much can't see the light at the end of the tunnel for anything so i think that for her you know she needed help with getting her depression under control and i think it helped what she was saying with the social worker. She had someone to talk through some things with yeah. and she was able to get in a better headspace, which then led her to meeting her current husband, which I think her husband and her family is like a huge rock of support and just positivity in her mm-hmm. life. And I think that maybe she just needed a goal, you know, like she needed something tangible um, to reach for. And sometimes people need that outside motivation, you know, for yourself, Oh, I know I need to do this mm-hmm. and I'll get to it eventually. But by being accountable to doctor now, I feel like that gave her that external goal and validation that she needed to reach her goals. Possibly. So yeah, yeah cause she did great, but moving on. So her husband comes home and she asks him, what does he want for dinner? Um, She has her grandson grill some pork chops and she says she's motivated to lose weight so she can get back in the truck with Russell Mm -hmm. and she doesn't have the strength or stamina to go anywhere. Uh, She also has heart issues. And also I always look at the family. Most of the time, whenever these people are in these positions is also cultivated by the environment that they live in. You look at the environment. It's not like she's the one. Un- it's not like she's the one eating unhealthy, and everybody else is just in perfect shape. Right. And everybody's eating well. Some things is just learned behavior. You get what I'm saying? Some things is just like this is how we eat. You know, we eat this. We fire up the grill and things of that nature, and we eat this much portions because her daughter-in-law is not in great shape. Her husband's not in great shape. The son is on the way there. You get what I'm saying? So there is obviously a way to eat. In this family. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And not just Rose, but you see it in other families and other situations. Yeah. And then also the other thing that happened with Rose that I remembered is that she got sick because she said she was on a path to losing weight um, before she started having her heart issues and things like that. So I think that knocked her off as far as um, being consistent in that journey independently. So. We are in month one, Mm -hmm. and she is going from Arkansas, is where she lives, to Houston to see Dr. Now. Mm -hmm. She is able to get into the passenger seat, so that was, you know, good to see. And her daughter-in-law and stepson are the ones that are going to take her. Now, they stop after two hours because her body's hurting, and they have to get her in the electric scooter so she can get into the hotel. Once they get her into the hotel, they get her on her oxygen, and they rest for the night. Mm. Now, they get on the road the next day. They have seven more hours to go. And she tells us, she's like, I'm eating chips for breakfast. So (laughs) Mm. just starting here, like, I I don't know. I wasn't too sure about Rose at first. 
Wow, and this is at now the trips for breakfast was after they left the hotel, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, with the knee pain. I thought she wasn't gonna make it. Mm. I thought she wasn't gonna make it because they had to stop two hours into the trip. Yeah. And things of like that. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, three hours later she says that she needs another break, but they um go ahead and get some fast food. Mm-hmm. She says she doesn't know what it'll take, but if Doctor Now tells her to eat dog poop, that's what she'll do. Dog poop? That's crazy. It's I thought not... it was dog food. <laughs> So they finally make it to Houston and they get to the hotel. Mm. Now, it is the next day at Dr. Now's office and she steps on the scale mm. and she weighs in at 564.6. And she's actually kind of pleased to hear that because 20 years ago she was over 700 pounds. Mm-hmm. So she was pleased to hear 564 actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Now comes in and she is in this motorized wheelchair because it's difficult for her to walk long distances. And Dr. Now is just basically asking her, like, how long have you been in the wheelchair or how long have you um, been using this? And she says she's had it for 20 years, but she doesn't use it all the time. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Now says that you eat all day. And he asks her, what do you do all day? She says she eats and she sits. Mm -hmm. He says you eat all day and you're trying to figure out what to do. He says, I don't have magic mm-hmm. to get you to stop eating. He asks, what's different now? And she tells him that she has the willpower. Now she needs the knowledge. Dr. Now says, you didn't know how you were eating wasn't the right thing to do. And she says, apparently not. I mean, look at me. Um, she eats whatever she can get her hands on. Mm-hmm. Her daughter-in-law um, cooks and brings her the food. Mm-hmm. And she says, if Sam doesn't bring her the food, she won't eat it. It's not like it's a big um fight if sam doesn't bring her the food that she wants but she just always does yeah try try to make it seem like hey look even though she enables me if i tell her to bring me healthy food she's gonna bring me healthy food yeah Uh, okay rose (laughs) so uh rose explains that doctor now has the programs the right types of food Mm -hmm. that she can eat that she can cook And her goal is to get the weight off so she can get into the truck with her husband, Mm -hmm. walk into stores, do things with her grandkids. And she's very motivated. And she tells Dr. Now that she's willing to eat poop if that's what he was to tell her. Dr. Now says, I'm going to go get the diet plan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'll be back. (laughs) And and, and here's the thing about it. I I could have sworn she said dog food. I don't know. He said dog poop. But I'll go with what she said. said ish. Like. The curse oh. word. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. My thing is, that's why I'm like, what What was it with Rose? She seemed so motivated and she was talking so big that I felt like Dr. Now. I'm like, you just, like, like basically, like, oh, you got the willpower. Then what? Then, like, what are you doing here then? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, like the food that I'm telling you to eat is not, like, food coming from Dr. Now's kitchen. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? It's it's like you know you you know that breakfast you ate is not good, right? You know it's not because in a couple of scenes later, you had a plate full of food and then now you're eating three boiled eggs and like turkey bacon. Mm-hmm. So you obviously know that what you was eating before ain't right. So like that's why I kind of thought during this scene that like oh yeah she's definitely um she's definitely talking herself up. You okay. get what I'm saying? I wasn't a believer. Yeah. Yeah. And Dr. Now, he feels like she's a handful with her personality. Mm -hmm. He hopes that she's sincere in what she says. Um, He's skeptical. But if she has the motivation, um, she wouldn't need help to lose the weight, especially if she lost weight on her own already. So Mm -hmm. Dr. Now isn't too sure about her. The goal is for her to lose 50 pounds in two months. They'll have her check her weight at a local clinic and then do a televisit with Dr. Now. And that's what I'm saying. Like, my mm-hmm. thing is, that's why, I, like, Rose kind of, kind of confused me. Like, I understand she went through depression and things of that nature. But I'm like, hey, listen, if you're willing to eat dog poop, hey, all I'm asking for is an apple. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 why are you so extreme with your, like, like, why are you so extreme with your dedication, I guess? You get what I'm saying? You could be dedicated that strong with eating the right way. So in the beginning, I did not believe Rose at all because I'm just like, uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Rose is back home. Yeah. Sam makes her two boiled eggs, two pieces of turkey bacon for breakfast. Oh, my goodness. And she says she's been working her butt off. She has been doing the workouts. She's actually finding new foods that she likes. Mm -hmm. And so far, so good. Yeah, and guess what? That's even less calories than what el- than what all of y'all get for Starbucks. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, it, it very confused me that you thought 
you know, three boiled eggs, two boiled eggs, whatever it is, compared to eight eggs, ten eggs, like, like you have to think like it is kind of crazy that I'm eating ten eggs when they when she's whisking the eggs, it's all the way up to the top of the pot. Like you, you gotta think like this is crazy. Yeah. Especially when it's just for her. Even when she was making a joke in the um in the car when they was at the fast food place on the way to Doctor Now, I think she asked for a stick bucket or something, some other things, and she made the joke like, "Okay, so what do y'all want after after they order food for everybody else?" I'm like, "You know, you're overeating." Yeah, you get what I'm saying. It's like I understand you need some knowledge and things like that, but at the end of the day, you want the surgery, mm. and and you have to go through Doctor Now, and you have to go through the dedication and things like that. And so far, I just wasn't a believer. Mm. I just wasn't a believer. Yeah. Well, Rose also has her grandkids help her with doing the exercise. Yes. She goes to the weight loss clinic to weigh in and she is walking in instead of using the electric scooter mm-hmm. this time. So I was like, okay, that's we're on the good path with that. So yeah. maybe her stamina is getting better. She weighs in at 497.8. Nice. She lost 67 pounds. So she gets on the televisit with Dr. Now. Mm-hmm. He wants her to see the cardiologist just to make sure her heart is in a good position for her to have surgery and yeah. get cleared for that. And as long as she continues to lose weight, about 25 pounds a month, he'll move forward with the surgery. And if she moves to Houston. Yeah, at this point, mm-hmm. she shut me up. I was like, well, okay. Yeah, I was uh, like, oh, yeah, she's doing it. Yeah, <laughs> but you said something that actually made me go, hmm. Because Rose is one of the ones that wasn't bedridden. Mm-hmm. Right. She can walk. I know. I understand her knee. Her knee hurts. I understand that she's, um, you know, she got back pain and things like that. But she lost that much weight in one month on her own. Yeah. And we're going to see her lose more weight throughout the episode. Yeah. It kind of leads me to think like what you said. She can kind of do this on her own. That's what I was thinking, too. I was like, she Be- she might not need the surgery she, if she can stay disciplined. She did not mm-hmm. seem as from the eye. As a 600 pound life candidate to me. Mm. She just seemed like someone who went through a dark time. And a hard time. And just needed someone to basically kick start the willpower that she says she has. Yeah, she needs some structure. She she Mm -hmm. says she was 700 pounds. She went down to 546 or like whatever it was. Right? So I'm like, hey, I've seen a B story. I see... All these other people's stories that we cover and things like that to where they couldn't get out the bed. Yeah. They had to bring the ambulance in to basically get them out the bed to move them from point A to point B. The stretcher and things of that nature. They have to stay in the hospital after the point. She could stand up and actually walk and do the exercise and things like that. So to me, in this position, I was looking at it like, I don't know if you are a 600 pound life candidate. Mm. Compared to the stories that we've seen this season. Okay. To where I'm like, these people can't walk. They can't exercise. They can't really do anything. But you can walk. You can, you touching the toes and you doing the twists and you, I understand the pain, but the pain will alleviate the more weight you lose. Right. And the fact that you lost 200 pounds before, I'm like, uh, maybe people just want the surgery. But, you know, she is in a position where she may need the surgery, but I don't know. Yeah. So she exercises with her grandkids again. This is month four. Yeah. Um, the cardiologist has cleared her for surgery. Mm-hmm. And if she moves to Houston, continues to lose the weight, Dr. Now will approve her. Continue to lose the weight was, what's the word, Rose? Right. But it seemed like she was focusing a lot on the move to, move to Houston. Mm-hmm. She says that the move is proving to be difficult because her family needs her. And she's also caved to some of her sweets cravings at mm. times. Now... When we were talking about, or at least when she said her family needed her, I didn't quite know what that meant until we got a little bit later on to where we found out she has custody of her daughter's children. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, that makes more sense because I was like, they need you. And I can understand from like an emotional motherly standpoint Mm -hmm. that they have this connection with you. But as far as like need, I'm more so thinking that they might be alleviated with you being gone, having the surgery being under the care of these doctors because they're constantly having to cook, bathe, wash. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's a lot that comes to caring for her. So um, I was a little confused by that at first to say, how do they need you? But mm. it could be in many different ways. So month five, um, she's worried because she slipped on her diet. Mm. She's back at Dr. Now's office. She weighs in at 492.9. So she only lost five pounds in the last five pounds. month. 
she admits that she slipped up. She cheated on her diet. Mm -hmm. Then when Sam goes to sleep, she dipped into the kid's sweets bucket. But Sam eventually locked it up so that she couldn't get to it. Mm -hmm. Doctor now wants her to lose 50 pounds in two months, move to Houston. Then they can discuss weight loss surgery. Mm, Going into the kid's snack bucket, which leads me to say what I said earlier. This is a family behavior. Yeah, this is a family issue. The fact that you have Mm -hmm. sweets or things of that nature, we think just because... Because it's there in the sense of sweets that, oh, it's just for kids. But if you start kids on that on that diet, Mm -hmm. if you start kids on that sugar and things like that, on that, you know, the biggest addictive drug in the world, sugar, that is like it shouldn't be a it shouldn't be a sugar box box bucket, whatever you want to call it, tray in the house anyway. Yeah, I, I, I remember the day that my nephew my nephew is 11 years old now. I think maybe even 12. I think he's 11. I don't know how old he is, right? Okay. But um, when he was little, for the longest time, prior to the age of seven, he never had soda. He never had juice, right? The only thing he had was water, right? So I remember the first time one of my aunties, um, without my sister knowing, um, when he was eating, you know how all the kids eating, mm-hmm. gave him grape soda, mm-hmm. right? That boy almost had a seizure. Mm. because it was just so much sugar he didn't know what to expect you know what i mean so it's like if you don't introduce the kids to it they don't really know what they're missing right and things like that but if you start them off with having a sugar bucket or a snack bucket and things like that it kind of lets them know that oh when i want a snack i get an oatmeal cream pie when i want a snack i get the marshmallow a uh, 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 pie, the marshmallow, uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm naming my favorite snack. You know? <laughs> so, 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 so like, so like with the knowledge and the things like that, you go off a habit. When you think of snacks, uh-huh. you don't think apple, grapes, and watermelon, things that you right, are, cheese, you know, crackers, he- uh-huh. healthy sugars, uh-huh. you, uh, unless you raise that way. But when you're raised to thinking that snacks is this and this and this and this, you're like, oh, of course, like, it's just a snack. You know, she probably been eating good, maybe, because mm-hmm. she still lost five pounds, but she probably was snacking bad. The snacking was completely wiping out whatever good she was doing. Yeah, and I agree with that. Like, I, I feel like the fact that they even have a snack bucket in the house just lets you know, like, their norm needs to be changed. Yeah. Because it's one thing to offer your kids a treat if the ice cream man comes by and you're like, do y'all want an ice cream today? Do y'all want like a little sweet treat? But just to have it at their fingertips at all times, Mm -hmm. like, and and maybe they do like ration it out to be like, okay, you can have this or you can have that. But for that to be like your snack go-to is chips and cookies and and cakes and stuff like that. Like, no, you got to teach them how to have healthier snacks too. You know, the cosmic brownie, you know, the brownies, (laughs) they got the little rainbow dots on it. Right. I'm just naming my own favorite snacks. That's all I (laughs) Right. So it's best just to not to introduce that as the norm. But it's how the world is though. And it's true. Because And that's why a lot of people have, you know, issues because they were either raised this way and they don't know exactly what they're supposed to do or they become so addicted to the sugar Mm -hmm. that it's hard for them to change so you go you go to see a movie you get snacks and you get junior mints you get some Reese cups and you get m&ms and you get popcorn with with like a with a pretzel and things so Mm -hmm. like when we think of snacks we think of treats right (laughs) you know what i'm saying not snack a snack is literally a, a a a low calorie a, a meal basically to get you to your meal mm-hmm. so for example when i say i want a snack i should be thinking you know let me get like a couple grapes you know maybe cheese and crackers maybe mm-hmm. something like that not like let me get a, a swiss roll with with, <laughs> with with some m&ms and I, you know i gotta top it off with a strawberry soda you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. i'm i'm just naming my favorite old snacks <laughs> back in the day you know what i mean so, but but mm-hmm. but and the next thing you know that's why you hear some people say hey don't have all the sweets before dinner because you're going to spoil your dinner. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You don't want to put those nasty calories on you mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So, yeah, Rose, Rose, no, Rose, no, she ain't do good this time because she was in the snack bucket. You yeah. Know? So we finally found a house in Texas. OK, so it is month six and she is packing up to move. Um, the grandkids are nervous about her heart. Mm-hmm. Um, they hope the doctor now can help her with the surgery. Sam is moving to 
uh, to Texas to help Rose. Mm-hmm. And she, we learned that is when we learned that uh, Rose has custody of her great grandkids. Yeah. And her daughter wasn't a stable mother. It's going to be hard for her to leave them. Mm. So Sam and Rose get to the house is fully furnished mm-hmm. and they are ready to see Dr. Now the, the next day to get started. Let's see. Mm-hmm. So we get back to Dr. Now's office. She said that she's had a couple of rough days not following with the diet, but she's happy to tell Dr. Now that she moved to Houston. Okay. This is where I was a little bit shaky. I was just like, Rose, are we losing our focus? No, the focus <laughs> I know. was we didn't move to Houston. <laughs> because I think there was another person, I think it was the season to where she was so focused on moving to Houston. And Dr. Now was like, if you don't lose the weight, it ain't no point in you moving to Houston. Mm. So I was just very like, I don't know, Rose, I'm glad you're here, but mm-hmm. hopefully you've been doing the other half too. Mm-hmm. So so she weighs in at 449.6. She lost 43 pounds, y'all. She met the goal. Of course, it wasn't 50, but I think Dr. Now was trying to get her in the habit of, hey, you're going to lose 25 pounds a month. Yeah. And it's going to be a liquid diet. So if you could do a regular diet and things like well, that. Not, they, oh, yeah. Go ahead. If mm-hmm. you go do a regular diet and things like that without any restrictions on you mm-hmm. to show the discipline when I, when you really have to be disciplined, you have those traits and habits already in, instilled in you that you could just basically keep going with what you was doing before. Right. So she tells Dr. Now that she moved to Houston with Sam Yeah. and Dr. Now tells her because she's super excited. She's like happy to get the surgery, mm-hmm. but Dr. Now also wants to be real with her that the surgery is risky, especially with your heart issue. Yeah. And he doesn't want her to think that she's a spring chicken. And this is just like the easy road. Like he wants her to be realistic that this is going to be a recovery process mm-hmm. and a hard process. So he tells her that they'll schedule the surgery. And if you keep losing the weight, they'll Mm -hmm. move forward with the surgery. Nice. And Dr. Now is happy that she stayed on track. They're going to run tests and hope that uh, the weight loss helped to reduce the strain on her body Mm -hmm. um, enough for her to move forward with the surgery. Yeah. Now, only thing I really want to say about that is that I, I don't know. Like, I feel like you can't down her happiness because she worked so hard to get to this point. But at the same time, like, she should be realistic about the recovery process, you right. know, but but I but I don't think she, I don't think she needed to say that in the moment. I feel like she knows that or at least Dr. Now was trying to make sure she knew that. Do you like what do you feel like? Do you feel like Dr. Now was trying to rain on her parade a little bit? I didn't feel like he was, but I was kind of looking at her like, yes, this is great. This is exciting. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I it seemed to me that she took it as like, oh, I, I'm going to get the magic pill now. It is surgery day. Mm-hmm. The surgery was a success. Month 10, she's at a uh, follow-up appointment with Dr. Now, mm-hmm. with her husband and with Sam. She was supposed to lose 25 pounds the first month on her liquid diet. She weighs in at 393.5. Mm-hmm. She lost 18 pounds. Nice. So she's on a good track. Dr. Now says that when she gets to her goal weight, they can discuss skin surgery. She needs to continue her healthy eating habits. Mm -hmm. She says she doesn't have any enablers around. And she tells Dr. Now that he gave her her hope back. He tells her he's proud of what she's done so far. And if she stays focused, she'll be okay. What did you think about this episode? I thought it was really good. I was glad to see Rose. I mean, she was focused and she didn't um, make excuses. She was right to the point and got in, lost the weight, got the surgery. And I hope she's still moving on that path. So she was she was serious about saying, changing her life. And I think that's commendable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's just me because I'm like, where was the drama? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, mm-hmm. like, is this what the, the show supposed to be? Somebody comes in who's overweight to like this level. They go and they be determined. They lose the weight. And then at the end, it's a happy story. I feel like it was just a little too happy. Okay. I feel like we got straight to the happy part pretty fast. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Compared to other people's story to where like, you know, like we had stories where uh, 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 the truck broke down and we had stories where the ambulance had to come get them because they never been out the house in seven years and things like that. Rose was able to walk. Rose was able to work out. Rose was able to stay on track. She was able to hit her milestones at one at one attempt each time and things like that. And now it's almost as if 
she's back to that point to where she lost weight when she was 700 pounds. Mm. And I just hope she stays on track and things like that. But we're going to check up on Rose later on in the season and make sure that all is well and, and that she's back in that truck with her husband. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to add to this episode? That's all I got. Make sure y'all subscribe, like, share, comment. We see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.